Welcome, everyone. Um, we're incredibly excited to announce uh, the uh, biggest lithium refinery, uh, uh, one of the biggest lithium refineries in the world, location that will be able to, uh, we, we expect, produce uh, lithium for about a million vehicles, produce more battery-grade uh, lithium than uh, the rest of North American refining capacity combined. You know, it's great to see uh, what companies like Tesla uh, is doing. You know, they've been a leader in the EV space now for such a long time. Uh, and now they're being uh, an amazing leader on building out the clean energy supply chain here in this country, uh, which is uh, what we're going to be seeing more and more of uh, as we move out with uh, the, the bipartisan infrastructure law and other incentives uh, put forth uh, through our Invest in America agenda. So just an amazing period of time. But let's really talk about this project. What does it mean? It means jobs. It means innovation, innovative processes. And it really means, as we look more holistically across the country, a secure domestic supply chain as we uh, move out on this clean energy economy. And really, uh, a secure energy future, uh, really, nationally. Uh, this is not just good for jobs, but it's good for the entire future of the state. Great decision on this uh, to bring uh, this landmark facility here. This facility fits within exactly what we're trying to achieve in Texas with regard to economic development. Texas wants to be able to be self-reliant, not dependent upon any foreign hostile nation for what we need. We need lithium for the phone you have in your hands, for the batteries that will be in Tesla trucks, uh, for other purposes. Uh, Texas wants to be able to increase our ability to refine lithium. You have taken that step with this project. Today is coming to reality. Texas is going to be more self-reliant today than we were yesterday. And, of course, we would not be here but for uh, the vision, uh, the hard work, and the commitment of Elon Musk and Tesla. Give it up for Tesla and Elon Musk. Elon brought his Gigafactory here, and he liked it so much, he brought Tesla here, and then the boring company here, SpaceX is here. Where's Neuralink? Part, part, Neuralink is partly here. That means that the future of Neuralink will be right here. Listen, there, there is no greater entrepreneur in the entire world than Elon Musk. We're proud he calls Texas home. Elon Musk and Tesla are part of the Texas economic juggernaut. Uh, you were talking, uh, Dr. Hogan, about the, the Texas economy, and so were you, Elon. So Texas has, we rank number one in the United States for the fastest growing economy of any state in the country. Last year, Texas added more new jobs than any other state in America. With this project and more, we will maintain our position as being the number one job generator in the United States of America. And before I go right here in front of this new Tesla Giga truck, I want to uh, present a proclamation from the state of Texas to Elon Musk. It's, it's for the Tesla lithium refinery. It has several paragraphs of language in there that I will not take the time to read to you right now. Just know that it's carefully worded in, in recognition of the role that Tesla plays as well as their lithium refinery facility plays uh, in the future of our state. We have great gratitude for the entire Tesla team and for Tesla Lithium Refining to be right here in Nueces County, Texas. Elon, why don't you come on up and let me give this to you. Well, that's uh, super appreciate the, the kind words. And Tesla is incredibly appreciative uh, for everything that the state of Texas has done and that the governor has done. Thank you. Um, and uh, we appreciate the support of the county and, and really all, from at, at every level, we've just gotten so much support. So I just want to say thank you all. Um, and as you can see, we've got the uh, earth, moving, earth moving equipment uh, already here, so we're going to begin construction immediately. Um, we're aiming to uh, finish construction uh, next year and then reach uh, hopefully full production about a year later. That's, that's a, which is very, this is extremely fast by you know, normal, normal standards. Um, but that's how we do things. So, um, the, the capability we're aiming for is approximately a million vehicles worth of, uh, of battery grade lithium. Um, but so uh, the, the potential is there to expand beyond that number uh, as needed. 
Um, we intend to continue to use uh, uh, suppliers of lithium, so it's not that Tesla will do, do all of it. But we thought uh, it's important to address what we think is, uh, as we look ahead a few years, a fundamental choke point in the advancement of electric vehicles is the availability of battery-grade lithium. Um, and lithium ore itself uh, uh, for mining is actually quite common. So lithium is, is, is actually a very common element on Earth. It's present uh, basically in every country. So it's, it's not that there's a shortage of lithium uh, ore to mine, uh, but there is a shortage of, uh, of, of really heavy industry uh, refinement of, of lithium to, to battery grade. And, and, and battery grade lithium uh, actually has to be extremely uh, precise, uh, ultra pure, because if you have any impurities uh, in the lithium, it causes degradation of the battery. So the purity requirements are, are, are extremely high. Um, and uh, we've, we've got a number of innovations that we think will be quite effective in the uh, refining of lithium that uh, haven't been done before. And maybe that's a good point to hand it over to Drew. Sure, yeah, happy to run through it. My name is Turner Caldwell. I lead our battery raw material and recycling efforts at, at Tesla. Um, so speaking to some of the innovation that we're gonna be pursuing on site, the conventional process, and I won't get too into the weeds, um, but it's heavy, it's a heavy sulfuric acid consumer, it's a heavy sodium hydroxide consumer, and as a result, the byproducts that are produced from that conventional process are, are challenging to manage. You end up with a lot of sodium sulfate that no one really wants. Um, here, what we're gonna be using are much more inert reagents. We'll be consuming soda ash, sodium carbonate, very common industrial chemical. We'll be consuming lime, again, very industrial, very common industrial chemical. Um, and it's a much more direct route that consumes 20% less energy all in. It consumes uh, reagents that are 60% less cost, uh, costly. Um, and, uh, and all in, the, the production cost is around 30% lower uh, on a unit, unit cost basis. Um, but the, the real key thing here is that the byproduct that's produced is, is much more inert. It's basically a mix of, of sand and limestone. Um, and the team here has been working really hard on finding beneficial use opportunities for that, that sand and limestone uh, to try to feed that into construction materials uh, so that we end up with a, as, a, as a net environmentally uh, very neutral site. Yeah, and I think one of the great things about both working on this lithium refinery here uh, in Corpus uh, and the cathode facility that we have in Austin is that we see the end-to-end -end uh, impacts of any decisions we make on the technical side on how we design the battery cathode or specify the purity of the lithium so that we avoid unnecessary complication along that path. The whole dig it a ditch, fill it and dig it again that tends to happen in the material supply chain. We're, we're, we, we are very intentionally sort of eating our own dog food as sometimes they say to make sure that we don't uh, hold ourselves to standards that are unnecessary while still delivering an awesome end product and cutting out all the the, the the inefficient uh, process steps along the way. In fact, we're looking at 30% fewer process steps in this refinery than a typical refinery while still achieving what we need to uh, to, to uh, hit our, our cathode uh, quality and performance targets. Um, yeah, and so some of that is actually removing some of the purification steps that you would put in if you were a standalone lithium producer because ultimately what matters is impurity levels in the final product, yep. not in the intermediates that get handed from supplier to supplier. Yeah, I mean, like... The, the most efficient form of lithium to use is lithium hydroxide instead of lithium. We're getting a little technical here, but lithium hydroxide instead of lithium carbonate. But uh, what a lot of um, ref um, current industry refining things will do is they'll convert it to lithium hydroxide, then convert it to lithium carbonate, then convert it back to lithium hydroxide. That's what we mean by dig the ditch, fill the ditch, dig it again. Yeah. So we want to st stop that yeah. and just, just go straight to high purity lithium hydroxide. Um, and a couple of points about you know this location. It, it really is an ideal location for um, uh, us to, to have this lithium refinery, both because of the strong community support, but also the talent base that's in Corpus Christi in the re in, in oil and gas refining. Actually, is is very applicable to what we're doing here. Uh, it's close to Austin. Uh, there's a really good deep water port, so we can bring in uh, the spodumene, which is the rock input uh, to this refinery from, uh, you know, all over North America through an easy path. And it's also directly on rail. Um, so we can also bring in the rock and the out send the outgoing product via rail. So truly an awesome site with a, a fantastic community support. Can't thank you enough. Um, and really excited to get this project in motion. Yeah. And I, we do want to emphasize this is a very sort of uh, clean 
uh, Turner sort of alluded to it, but a very clean refinery. Uh, so it's not like this, there's no toxic emissions or anything. You, you, could live, you could live right in the, in the middle of the refinery and not, not suffer any, any, any ill effects. So a very clean uh, operation. Indeed. Yeah, and the, um, as we look forward into the future, obviously day one, it's designed for this spodumene concentrate. It's from hard rock mines. But as we start to have recycled batteries coming back, the, the factory is designed to be feed flexible. Yep. So a virtuous circle of battery materials in North America for North American factories. Really excited to uh, set, set that you know, agenda in motion both in Austin and here in, in Corpus Christi today. Great. Sounds good. So what should we do next? Oh, uh, yes. Cool, yeah. Shovelers? I think we should up. break some ground. Break some ground. Great. Let's <laughs> break ground. All right. All right.